Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's about 10 to 6 here on Tuesday, the 22nd of June. And my word, uh, have we had uh, an interesting couple of days uh, on markets. So uh, yesterday, uh, we made up an awful lot of uh, uh, what we lost on Friday. Um, and uh, that was certainly a surprise to me. I thought yesterday we were going to open down and then maybe reverse as we were oversold. But it moved up uh, right from the open. Uh, the trend situation on VectorVS hasn't changed. It was a very soft opening uh, today. Uh, and uh, the uh, primary wave on VectorVS is uh, down. The underlying trend is up. And we've still got a confirmed up in place. And the buy-sell ratio, in fact, uh, just above one at 1.04 earlier on uh, just at the open it went down below one but uh, markets have got a little bit stronger uh, over the last uh, what hour or so uh, so uh, I've got quite a few charts open I just need to find the right one uh, that's the vector vest composite uh, ladies and gentlemen the, an equally weighted index of all of the shares that we follow on the American markets and uh, that's the uh, big move up uh, yesterday, uh, after the slump last week, after the FOMC uh, announcement. So uh, today, fairly flat uh, on the overall market, uh, but uh, market uh, the S&P 500 that I look at next uh, being held up uh, by the NASDAQ that's having quite a good day. We'll look at that chart in a moment. Uh, if we look at the uh, short-term measure of the trend on VectorVest, that's the primary wave. It's down, still down. Uh, the medium term measure, the DEW, is up. And the longest term measure of the trend to confirm call is also up. Uh, so um, uh, advice, uh, the front page of VectorVest is saying uh, that we shouldn't be buying any more shares until uh, the short term trend rejoins the longer term trend and the little pointers in the green so that both trends are pointing the same way. Uh, so, uh, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. I've got a couple of positions running. Uh, I haven't added any more as yet, although I'm severely tempted in a few. Uh, so let's just have a look at the S&P itself. There's the S&P. S&P having a much stronger day. Uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, starting to look much, much, much better. Uh, that's the uh, big huge move up yesterday off the open okay it just went up in a straight line what a magnificent day to be long of the market uh, if we have a look at this uh, over the last month and uh, as you know I, I like the Fibonacci work and if we look from this high down to that low uh, we can see that we've in fact pushed above a 78% retracement of that. That's a very positive number indeed. If it can close up there, that's starting to look quite good. Don't do anything onto VectorVest tells you it's time to do something, but nevertheless, that, that's starting to look quite positive indeed. So uh, it's just amazing how things jump around from day to day. I was reading a book about Steve Jobs uh, the other day, and uh, uh, and both Jobs and Bezos at Amazon say that their uh, biggest secret of success is their ability to adapt. And it seems that Jobs used to freak people out in meetings because he would argue one way very strongly. And as soon as some new information came in, he would completely and utterly change his mind and argue uh, the opposite way. And it used to freak out people very close to him. But certainly in markets, as new information comes in, you have to be adaptable. Uh, and uh, uh, this would seem to uh, a close above that 78% level. Uh, and uh, that's uh, quite a bullish development. Uh, just let's have a look now if I can find it at the NASDAQ itself and that's the NASDAQ composite folks and this is pushing very strongly on this top line uh, defining that ascending triangle that's been in place since March. Uh, technical analysts watching would know that the first target from this would be this distance uh, and that's one hell of a lot of points okay uh, so a, 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 str a, a strong breakout here would be a very positive development indeed and money seems to be flowing back into tech issues uh, once more. Uh, so uh, I have a couple of positions. I'm very pleased with Zoom and Zoom uh, 
is a share. Uh, the trade was taken based on a weekly view, and uh, uh, this is Zoom doing what it did during the pandemic. Uh, and I'd never heard of the damn thing before the pandemic. And then it it pulled back, and it pulled back. Those of you that were on my Fib course uh, the other night. Uh, it pulled back to this confluence of this resistance area and a 62% retracement. Folks, they do that all the time. Uh, one of my very, very first desk heads here in London, a long to quarter of a century ago, used to say, wait for the 62% retracements, they always come around. Uh, and uh, I've never forgotten that. Sooner or later, they drift back to that 62% level. This is an interesting pullback because it happened in three waves. And I'm more than happy to admit that you need a little bit of uh, uh, creativity to see them some stage. But that pullback in three waves is a pattern. I also spoke about it at our... Uh, Fib went to sell course uh, last night. Uh, that pattern made famous by a gentleman by the name of Harold McKinley Gartley a hundred years ago. Uh, and uh, that's called a Gartley uh, 222 because uh, it was on page 222 of Gartley's book. Uh, those of you that are more conventional, Alice, the weekly MACD uh, is showing very strong reverse divergence and it's just crossed up. And those of you that follow the MACD histogram will see that uh, a signal which is preceded by a little bit of divergence on the histogram is normally a good signal. So this is, this is a, a, a weekly uh, divergence uh, that's been running since February last year. Uh, and that invariably precipitates quite a strong move. So I'm looking forward to a big move in this. Just remember the technical data, fundamental data, does not predict the future. It says there's a higher probability of one thing happening over another. If you're right 80% of the time, well, you're wrong 20% of the time. And your success in making money is uh, going to be defined by how you can get your mind around that. And it's not easy. And uh, most of us have been, in fact, brainwashed by an education system uh, that uh, rewards us when we're right. And if we're not right, we sit at the back of the class with a big dunce's hat on. Uh, and uh, uh, here, uh, we don't have to be right that often to make a fortune. Uh, just remember that uh, uh, old David Beckham only hit the goal three times out of ten. Those of you that are North Americans, David Beckham. Uh, was a famous uh, British footballer. I believe he's got a team running in Florida these days or somewhere. Uh, so uh, that looks to me like a high probability opportunity. I'm also very uh, happy uh, with apps. And apps, uh, also a weekly chart. Uh, in this case, I thought it was going to come back to here, but... Uh, in this case, we've got a 62% retracement of this big range. If I get it right, yeah, to there. And we've got a trend line in place. And uh, there's resistance here, which has become support. Um, I thought maybe it could have got down to the 78, but it didn't. It stopped there, and I bought it just about here. And uh, I'm pleased to say that that's going very nicely indeed. And again, we've got that same uh, MACD a reverse divergence. The MACD, in fact, hasn't uh, given us a signal uh, as yet. Last week wasn't a good week, uh, uh, as most of us found on Thursday and Friday. Uh, but uh, that's the only two positions I've got at the moment uh, in uh, the um, uh, North American market. Uh, I'm I'm going to add to those positions if and when uh, the. Uh, primary wave turns back up in sync with the DEW, in sync uh, with uh, the confirmed call. And when you follow your rules and you tick your boxes, well, uh, you get uh, very lucky indeed. I'll report on what I'm looking at. Uh, Roku looks very interesting indeed, but many of the tech issues starting to look exceptionally strong. Keep your eye on the NASDAQ. Now, the other uh, source of a bit of pain over the last couple of days, of course, was the gold market. And uh, as soon as there was a sniff of interest rates going up in uh, 2023, I believe, the Lord only knows what's going to happen between now and 20, 
2023. But uh, the gold market sold off very strongly and it found support on 62% of the last range. To the tick. There's also a note low down here where there have been a lot of stops. This is a 4 hour chart, folks. And this is a very important bottom that it's trying to beat out, clearly. We've still got falling tops here, so it's a long, long way from confirming this. But if I can find my trend line tool, if it were to break uh, above that little trend line, that in fact would uh, be a reasonable confirmation. There's a little head and shoulders bottom, uh, 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 inverted head and shoulders bottom uh, setting up there. So uh, the gold market doing its best to find some support here. If this level goes, then the next level is about 17.22, which is uh, a a confluence of the 78% retracement and uh, uh, some old levels on the chart. Uh, uh, let's see, I, I'm still holding uh, two UK gold stocks. I uh, cut the GDX leverage position last week, last week Thursday or something, but I'm still holding Pan African Resources and I'm still holding uh, uh, Polymetal. And, uh, they're up a little bit today. They're up a little bit today. Uh, so uh, uh, let's see if this uh, can play out. There's a huge prize in the gold market. And I've shown that prize quite a few times uh, on the weekly chart. There's a huge cup and handle on the weekly chart with a target of about 2300 in the gold price. Uh, that's going to be fought over uh, and it won't, uh, in fact, be given to us easily. Uh, so... Uh, just sit. If you're not in the gold market, do nothing. Okay. Uh, if you're in uh, the gold market, then uh, I think that uh, uh, as long as this level hangs in there, uh, then uh, I would certainly hold on to those shares. And that's what I'm doing. All right. So uh, if we go right back to the U.S. market again, nothing much has changed in the last little while. It's lunchtime across there. Uh, and uh, as I say, the uh, S&P uh, setting up a very, very good day on the S&P and the NASDAQ doing its best to push north of that ascending triangle. So um, S&P been held up by the NASDAQ. The weakest uh, index of the lot is still uh, the uh, Dow Jones. So uh, steady as she goes, folks, uh, in uh, both the UK uh, and uh, in the US, Vector is saying uh, that you should sit in your hands and wait for the short term trend of the market to rejoin the longer term trend of the market. Uh, in the UK portfolio, I haven't done anything. Uh, I'm watching uh, those two gold stocks fairly carefully. So I hope this helps. Uh, the market will make a decision for us one way or the other, uh, probably after uh, the uh, Fed's testimony to Congress, which I think is tomorrow. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.